Hi everyone, I'm here in Lake Stevens. Well, the coronavirus has been with us for a while and I thought I would do a video to kind of talk about ways to cope with it. I think there's probably lots of good people out there that are doing a fine job of giving out information and how to comfort yourself during these times. But I thought, you know, I probably should do something. So here I am. I'm not an expert. This isn't meant to be medical advice or any kind of professional, you know, take to replace a professional therapy. But these are some ideas. Probably the most obvious one that seems to have hit all of us is this idea that we really can't control the future. I have on another video this equation where it's a fraction and in the denominator it says unknown future. In the numerator it says control, you know, or attempts to control or illusory control and so that equals anxiety. If we rely on our own strengths during this time, we're going to have troubles, I think. I think we're going to have stress, anxiety. How do we find peace with that equation? Well, actually, going back to the equation, an unknown future is something we all can guarantee. That um, no one knows the future, whether there's a virus pandemic or not, whether there's difficulties in a relationship or difficulties at work or your own personal health or anything. We really can't guarantee anything. If we're really in touch with this, then we might actually go a little crazy trying to fix things as much as we can or try to control as much as we can and that causes us problems. But if we surrender to God, to um, the creator of the universe, the person who has all knowledge, all power, all love, all peace, everything we'd ever need for any situation is found in him, we're going to be okay. Um, it's times like these that can cause us to reach out and realize, wow, we don't know everything. We can't fix everything. Even the economy, we can influence it, but we really can't ultimately control it. It takes just a little microscopic germ and look at us. So a place of humility is a good place to be, where we know only a little. We um, only have limited power, limited vision, a number of things. And if we tap into this power, what happens is then we get empowered, we start to feel at peace, and then we start to know what I am to do at a personal level, like what is my personal to-do list today? I think taking one day at a time with this is a good idea. Not projecting into the future all kinds of things that could happen. Um, we could use up a lot of today to worry about what could happen or not happen. I think focusing too much on it, that may seem like an obvious thing for many of us now, that okay, we've watched the media. We know that this is something to be taken serious. We know that there's going to be closures of events in schools. And, but then what, you know? How am I gonna live my life in the midst of this? And do I wanna use up two years or two months or two weeks, you know, however this thing affects us, I think is up to us. You know, we do have some sense of control in the sense of what I want to choose to focus on. One might say, well, what if I can't control my thoughts? What if I can't control my own brain that's going down this catastrophic path? Then surrender control of that. Surrender that to God and to uh, admit powerlessness over that. I think the first thing to do is to identify that we do that. Not all of us do this. Some of us, I don't think, 
I think enough, but that, I mean, that sounds like an opinion, but they really go through life not thinking much. They just act. Um, and there's pros and cons of that. And then there's overthinkers that think too much and think too much before things and then become indecisive and at worst paralyzed. So letting go of control, praying instead of thinking, that, that's a really good slogan. Um, you know, moving from thinking to prayer. Every time a person starts to think a thought that's not useful, they can pray a prayer, surrendering that situation. And perhaps many times a day you're going to be doing that. And that's okay, actually. If there's something good that comes out of any hardship, it could be that we're actually connecting with God more and we're praying throughout the day, which is probably how we all could be. We could have an incredible life on this earth when we do that. Yeah, it's, it's like peace throughout the day. I think a lot of addictions are trying to be comforting. People may do a number of addictive behaviors to get through a difficult time. And that's why surrendering the things we cannot change, but then having the courage given to us by God to do the things we can do seems to be such a powerful weapon against this. And we're not trying not to use our drug of choice. Yes, maybe we are just a smidge, but reality is that we need a power greater than ourself to tap into. And rather than tap into the drug of choice to get us through the crisis, we can actually tap into God throughout the day. If we're prone to sensitivity, where we are feeling other people's symptoms, we are convinced we have the coronavirus because we just feel it <laughs> coming through the screen. You know, we can feel and we start getting the symptoms. Then we need to pray for being tough, mentally, mentally tough and courageous and not being so sensitive. If we err on the side of lack of sensitivity, Perhaps we just don't feel too much about this and what other people are going through. Perhaps we could pray for more sensitivity in this issue. If we're prone towards dwelling or fixating on something, getting stuck. So you can, some people worry, but they don't really stay there. There are people that worry and stay there. It's like a broken record in their mind. And there's some studies to suggest that the brain actually has systems, you know, the cingulate gyrus, things that are just much more overactive that get stuck. What helps that? Well, exercise, burning off the adrenaline, going walking, 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 doing something physical seems to help us not think so much. Sleep. Sleep actually helps us with our immune system. I think it's probably one of the more powerful things, which also relates to our gut. The gut is a big part of the immune system. So if we want to fight this by having a good immune system, thinking positive, prayer, sleep, exercise, and good nutrition. Now this may turn some of my viewers off but this is probably not the time to indulge in junk food and things like that it may be tempting but the reality is our bodies have to work hard to try to digest that and to try to keep the body healthy in spite of what we put into it and so if you're trying to fight off an infection anyway or the thought of getting an infection why not eat healthier you know that this may be one of the things that we all benefit from is we realize that um, you know just doing the basics are probably really good for us whether we have a crisis or not so those are just a few thoughts I wanted to bring to you today um, I hope this brings you comfort I'll probably be posting some more videos later um, yeah so with that, I wish you a wonderful day. Enjoy this day. Um, yeah, just one day at a time. Take care.